tell me, Greg. All right. All right. So hey I'm there, back. viewer tubers. Welcome, Hi, Greg, back, I'm to... back. Shut up, Greg. Welcome back to Bring Your Own Beer Night on Beer Analysis 101. We are doing barrel edged beers tonight. Without further ado, let's get over to who we have with us. We are starting with Mr. Ash the Sexton. Hey, how's it going? Yeah. The Sexton. How are you doing today, Nick? I'm better now that I'm home from the, the last few days of my current job. That's great. Yep. Uh, thanks Yay. for having me. Excited to be here. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Let's go. All right. Let's go over to Mr. Rouge Beard. Redbeard, of course, of Redbeard Brewing, or not Redbeard Brewing, but Redbeard's gaming channel. <laughs> I don't know. You got more than just uh, Redbeard. Uh, and the, uh, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the uh, yeah, yeah, uh, that's a Redbeard Festival. Beer Fest May, happening. May 23rd. May 23rd. North Bay, Ontario. Granite Club. Woo! All righty. <laughs> and, of course, we got Greg with us. He's got a big glass that's almost it's bigger than his head. Cheers. I'm just going to drink myself tonight. Yep. I like the olive going in the glass. <laughs> <laughs> also, if head, Arnold head should first. happen to try and have his way with me, it'll censor the naughty bits. So, there we go. Yeah, he's he's, 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 he's got head, head, head first ribbon. That's good. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right. Speaking of our rim jobs, let's go over to Mr. Craig. How are you doing tonight, Craig? Of a Kent beer reviews. I understand you were busy doing a beer review. That's where we're late. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Thanks for eventually uh, hanging on for me. And uh, it's normally Greg. I get that, but oh fuck it, I'm due one. Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank, thanks for having me. Appreciate it. No problem. Glad to have you on. Always glad. All right, so let's go over to uh, the to, back to me for a second. I should have done this in the last round, but oh well, Mr. Ash, what beer did you bring with you tonight? Uh, I am. I've, I've actually been holding on to this beer for a while. Uh, I bought this back in 2018 when I was out and about with uh, Mr. Albino Rhino, formerly of Albino Rhino, Albino, 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 and uh, now of Paverna Took Beer Reviews. And uh, I have from a collective arts. This is their origin of darkness. This was a collaboration with Forbidden Root, and this is their bourbon barrel aged stout with cocoa, guajillo chilies, and radish honey. Um, eleven point oh. five percent. Actually, this was reviewed by one of a friend of our channel's uh, East Coast Nick, aka Dan. He reviewed yeah. this actually back in the summer, I think, spring or summer, something like that. <laughs> That's what I got. Okay. And uh, Red Dude, what do you have with that? What you beer. Got? Beer. I couldn't find, I didn't have anything really kind of extra fancy or anything, so I went with kind of a, a staple that I am a very big fan of. Ah. Yes. Figured you went with that. Yes. That's how you were talking, but uh, it's never a bad beer, obviously. Hmm. All right. And uh, let's take a look and see what Mr. Greg has got with him, because he's always got something barrel-aged in his house. I do, and I didn't go for something that would be predictable, because I figured, well, we're doing Double Tempest soon, I could do a Bring Out Your Dead, but I don't know if it's worth that. Um, so I thought I'd do a new love that I enjoy, and I'm doing the official beer of Redbeard, the Beard of ah. Zeus. Nice. And much nice. like red beard, his beard is actually more orange than it is actually red. So there we go. <laughs> a little, 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 little more hair on the top of the head, yeah. That's and that, that's true. That's true. Yeah. And that one, uh, that one just came out, didn't it? It did. It is phenomenal. I think everyone that can get it in LCBO should get it, and I'll send one to Nick, and we'll analyze it. And the bottle is perfect for analing. Just that's really that. Day. That's going to the LCBO? I didn't, I didn't yep, realize LCBO that. Yep, LCBO. I think Jamie yeah. already found some, if I'm not mistaken. So uh, uh, definitely check it out. But uh, no, it's definitely worth uh, definitely worth uh, doing an anal on. Because, well, I can't spoil it, but it's, it's, it's okay. All right, speaking of spoilers. Uh, anyway, uh, let's go over to Mr. Craig. What did you review that was so rare that you had to do a review first of it? Um. It, it, it's a beer from Portugal um, from a brewery called uh, Mean Sardine. They're out of Lisbon. Oh, yeah. Uh, and it's a collaboration with Twole out of Copenhagen in Denmark. Interesting. Um, so it's an imperial stout aged with plums in Madeira wine barrels. Whoa. Fancy. 
So 12% ABV. Um, and it's it was brewed in uh, February of 2015. Wow. Um, and I've, I've had this beer four years. Oh, wow. 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 So that's, gee. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll circle back here and see, uh, see it held up. Anyway, let's go back over to moi here and see what I brought. This one I picked up in September on my trip over to Nova Scotia. Uh, this is from Lazy Bear Brewing Company in Smith Cove, Nova Scotia. This is their first crush, which is a saison fermented on wine grapes in the aged in oak wine barrels. So I'm kind of excited nice. uh, to try that. All right. Sounds fancy. Mm -hmm. You're so fancy. Fancy. And I got a roll of paper towel here in case it's a squirter because you know say you get really fancy. Yeah. Well, is, that what, is that what it's for? Is that what it's for? Yeah, right. Yeah. Conveniently placed roll of paper towel yeah. by his computer desk. Anyway, yeah, every, right. every, every, everything's at hand. So. <sighs> at hand. Uh, anyway, so moving right along with this professional uh, chat here, let's get the professional. That the no comments that we have. We got Chris saying, uh, "What's the goddamn holdup when we were waiting to go live?" He says, "Just Mate. kidding." Yep. Uh, just kidding. No, actually, Greg was late too. But uh, uh, lol, just kidding. I will listen on my way to work. Cheers, Chris. That's all we've got to say for comments. So we might as well just do a quick do over, and we can. I'll open her beers now, as you guys probably already have. And I'm going to go back to Ash and see what's what's your history with this. Like, how long have you had it? When did you pick it up? All that crap. Yeah, I guess I probably shouldn't have done that already. So I've had this beer for about two years now. So I picked right. it up. <laughs> <laughs> I picked it up when I was out and about with Chad. And uh, for whatever reason, you know, I, I bought it as part of a bigger order from Collective Arts. And... Uh, they had two Origins of Darkness when I went there, and uh, this they, they only had two of the six left. And th this was the one that I was a little on the fence about, um, because I, I'm not too big on having chilies or any peppers in my beer, and uh, I really wasn't too sure how radish honey was going to come across. Um, so, I mean, to be honest, I, I wasn't holding on to this on purpose. It's just one of those beers that just sort of kept on getting kicked to the side in the fridge and it's just like there's never the right time until you know we decide to do this and i was like fine like get to fucking free up the space and you know got kind of a reason to drink this beer so um but yeah i mean i i think i've i honestly can't remember what the other version that, that i had was but uh i know they they do these every year or they have for the last at least two years uh, i didn't get anything from this year's origin of darkness uh series uh, with the collaborations, but I heard a lot of them were pretty good. So, um, and yeah, so far this one's drinking pretty good. Nice. All right, Richard, I take it you just picked that up at the LCBO. But what's your history with it? I have had every version for the last I want to say four years, perhaps five years. The first the first time I ever had it, I wasn't a fan at all because my palate wasn't there yet. But ever since then. Uh, but aside from the whiny bastard and the weird cuvee stuff that they make, uh, I'm a big fan of the bastard series from Nickelbrook. Nice. Big fan. And actually, I've also had I, a version of that thing that Ashley's having. I had the uh, it Baltic Porter that was with uh, raisins and figs or something. Raisins and dates, I think, maybe. It was pretty good, too. Cool, cool story. Yeah. All right, Mr. Ewart. Uh, Greg. Great beer. How long? You, what's your history? With, what's the? What's your history with the beer that you're drinking? And how long have you had that particular bottle of it? First of all, that's S J. You work to you. And second of all, I'm just trying to look up when the first time I had this was. Uh, was this? I've had it every time it's come out. So apparently, this is the third release of it, which I believe makes sense according to my memory. And. Um, I kind of fucked up the first time I had it because I followed the brewer's recommendation. Uh, when it first came out, um, I'm just trying to get an exact date on this. I'm unprofessional. Okay, so the first time, first year it came out in 2013, and it actually had a sticker on it. It came out somewhere in early 2013, probably February, March, and it literally had a had a sticker on it that said, "Oh no, I'm sorry, 2014." Early it came out, and then it had a, it actually had a sticker on it that said, 
this is best if drunk after December 31st, 2014. So I, and I only bought one of them because I was back in the day when it was a $10 bottle. I'm not buying more than one. That's crazy talk. So I didn't ever try it fresh. I all the recommendations and left it for like eight, nine months. And then it kind of tastes like ass. So that was not a good first impression. Um, then I had it in the second, the last release and I was, rather impressed with it and uh and the last release i believe was 2017 so they bring it out every three years it seems um and uh now i'm having this one that's exciting now i don't know i think nick may have mentioned this at some point and i don't know if we would have mentioned the history but the guy from uh half hours on earth i think his name's kyle he actually is the brewer of this or at least he was the original batch uh yeah. he won a contest at glb to get his beer brewed professionally and bottled yeah I, uh, and, that was, I, and then after that i think he gained enough popularity that he was able to start his own brewery and now we got half hours on earth which in my opinion is vastly overrated but yeah he, not, he's he was not, like the two-time winner of the toronto mm -hmm. beer festival's homebrew competition or something yeah. in 20, 2010 he did one like a smoked porter for amsterdam and i i pulled up the half hours on earth uh, history while you were talking so i know i heard that story before but uh he did a smoked porter with amsterdam yeah. and he did uh, uh beer to zeus with uh with great lakes brewing so and of course he went on to found uh uh, uh, half hours on Earth, which is like completely different from the two beers he won. Yeah, and that makes me sad that he focuses so much on sours uh, because it's kind of like it makes me sad that Bellwoods focuses pretty much all all on funk now because uh, it. Uh, I just feel that they they can do so much better if they just went with more traditional styles instead of trying to cater to the hipster crowd. But anyways, mm. enjoy your sours. Mm. I will. All right. Dang hipsters. And Craig, um, you know, you said that you had this for uh, four, this bottle of it for four years. Now you About said it was also years. rare. Um, yeah, they, they didn't. I don't think they produced too many of them. Um, wherever I kind of since I got this beer, I've been out to Madeira probably two or three times from the first time I went out there, and they, a good friend gave me this. Um, so I thought I'm aging that because it's like. Which is pretty rare. Um, so, Mean Sardine um, Brewery, they're out of, which is a quite a cool name, and um, they're out of uh, Lisbon in Portugal. Um, so, they're, they're, the guys from Tual in, in Copenhagen, Denmark, come over to brew this collaboration here. Um, I think it's in February, was it in February 2015? Um, Spring of yeah, spring of 2015. Um, so what it says on, on on the back here, it says uh, blah blah blah. blah. Um, to brew this pleasing stout with our friends at Mean Sardine, aged on Madeira barrels, together with fresh harvest plums from Portugal. Um, but yeah, it's aged in uh, Madeira wine barrels. Um, and it's also Is it? it says um, version. Which is a version of the, the Danish chocolate dessert plums in Madeira. So they kind of worked, it kind of fit really. So, uh, um, but yeah. Is, is, it, it, is it pleasing, as it says? It's very pleasing. That's that's just uh, a really funny thing to put on the bottle, this pleasing stuff. Yeah, they, they tell yeah, you it's pleasing. That way you believe it. They, there, 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 is, there is certain kind of like, um, there's probably a translational sort of thing that you pick up with with certain beers yeah it's possible uh, too but hmm. you know whatever we'll go into hmm. the taste notes after but yeah looking good all right all right so uh i guess the other thing i wanted to ask about your beer craig is, is that a one-off or is that uh oh yeah it was a collaboration in 2015 okay. all right well yeah that makes sense all right yeah well, hey, so let's go over to moi for a second here and take a look at the uh, beer that I brought, which is, of course, Lazy Bear's First Crush, which the story about me getting this uh, is I, um, my family, uh, my, my, my dad's side of the family is originally from uh, Annapolis Valley, Nova Scotia. So I went over last September to, uh, to uh, participate in a family art show that we were putting on. And one day I was there in Annapolis, Royal, where the art show was, and I took a walk down to the farmer's market. At this farmer's market, Lazy Bear 
or had a table set up and they were selling bottles of beer at the farmer's market. I'm like, oh my God, this is awesome. I can buy beer. I bought their double IPA and a regular IPA. And I tried to sample this at the uh, at the farmer's market. And I'm like, hey, that's that's not bad. So I bought a bottle of it and now I'm drinking it now. But should have reviewed it. But eh, eh, save a bit and I still can maybe. I don't know. Eh. Either way, I will come back, circle back with some thoughts. But uh, yeah, it, 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 it's pretty good. I mean, I'm not really totally into saisons, but we'll talk more about this in a bit. Anyway, that's my story. Let's go to the full panel and do some talking because we got five viewers. Nobody's commenting. Feel free to say something or at least even say hello or tell us what you're drinking. Yeah, uh, what's everybody drinking out in the internet world? How do the internet? How the internet? How you doing? Please stop talking with that stupid. Howdy ho! Franchise beer reviews. They're in the chat. Hey, fellow hey, beer drinkers, Scott here from Franchise. How are you doing, Cheers, buddy? Scott. How are you Come doing? On, all five viewers, tell us what you want to do next month. <laughs> oh God, uh, what do you? What are you, you drinking? Anything, Franchise? Let us know. Uh, yep. What else? What else is up with everybody? Oh, and booze Damn. reviews is in the chat drinking something that's not booze. He's drinking tea. Oh my! What no. kind of tea? Earl Grey hot or green or, or green tea? Come on, Earl Grey hot or kombucha He's got tea. Ten, ten. Is it? Is it the leap year? Twenty nine days. Tea. The leap year, right? Uh, this year? Yeah. This, yeah. This year's. Yeah. yeah so oh, Dan, 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 Dan's got ten days to go. Ten days to go, and you can have a sip wow. of the sweet, sweet. Nectar of love. Don't, I think Dan should give up on alcohol. You've got yeah. nine. You've got nine days. I'm telling you. Oolong tea. Of course. You, oh, oh. Don't encourage Greg. Uh -oh. Oolong. 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 Hey, we suddenly went up to seven viewers. Somebody shared the link. Did you, do, did you do a review? Or I'm offended. I would. All right. So Keep let's. Uh, well. Well, anyway, let's let's keep the ball rolling here. Uh, anybody ready to give their final their, their thoughts about what they think about the beer that they brought? I will take a deep dive in. Okay, deep dive away. Now, I, I don't know if Dan. Uh, I don't know if Dan was here since the beginning, but uh, I'm drinking uh, that Origin of Darkness that you reviewed a while back. So, um, yeah. Um, I, I mean, overall, I mean, I'll. Uh, I'm, I'm enjoying this one quite a bit. Uh, I'm actually glad I sort of held on to it. Um, the aroma, um, you get, you know, tons of the barrel on it, getting tons of, um, you know, just, I mean, I, getting tons of vanilla, tons of chocolate, getting tons of like caramelized sugar, um, getting a little bit of ashy roastiness to it, but I'm also getting a very noticeable like alcohol presence on the nose. Um, and, that, and that's just probably just from the barrel, just the extra spirit. Um, that just sort of carried through into the beer. Um, the body, it's 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 medium bodied. Um, I'm glad to see that this didn't get thinned out or anything like that in in the barrel. You know, it, it maintained its chewiness, so to speak. Uh, it's by no means like like heavily bodied or anything like that, but it's got a nice medium body to it, uh, a nice slickness to it. Uh, coats the tongue quite well. Um, now, again, this has cocoa nibs. Um, uh, guajillo chilies and radish honey. I'm not a big chili guy, as I mentioned earlier. I don't really like it in my beers. I do like a little bit of spice in my food, but I'm not like a fucking like pepper connoisseur or anything like that. So I'm not too sure if guajillo chilies are like where on the spectrum they, they sort of sit. Um, what I am very happy about with this beer is that there is a, a faint wisp or a faint memory of like a spicy pepper to it. So it it doesn't overpower the beer. It's not like, you know, if, if you're to list the like the flavor notes, it'd be like note number five. You know, it's like it's like layered underneath um, what you would expect from a nice bourbon barrel aged stout with you know cocoa nibs and whatever whatever you know what else. So um, yeah, th this is a really delightful beer. Um, I don't pick out any of the radish honey, whatever the hell that's supposed to taste like. Uh, but to be honest, I mean, it's, it's been in bottles for like two years. Um, I'm not too sure if fresh the, the chilies were a little bit more prominent or not, but I'm happy the way it is right now. Um, so, yeah. I, I, I'm sorry, Nick. Are, are, are we rating these? or Yeah, go ahead. Like, are we just doing personal preference, though? <laughs> well, I mean, it's for the style and for uh, overall personal preference. Like, uh, 
overall rating, but we're not adding the scores up at the end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, I like this. I like this beer. Um, so for personal preference, I'm I, I'm going to give this a solid nine out of ten. Uh, I, I really like it a lot. Um, the alcohol is pretty present on the nose. It's but in the sip, it's only chest warming. It's not like uh, an alcohol bomb or anything like that. So nine for personal preference, and I'll go eight and a half for style. Nice. Nice. Cheers. Cheers, Ash. Sorry, didn't mean to cut you off there. That's all good. All right. Uh, anyway, Mr. Redbeard, what do you think of Kentucky Bastard? Not that we don't no. already know. Yeah, just going to do the same thing as Ashley for anybody that wasn't here before. Um, I think this this year's especially, uh, I know Greg wasn't a huge fan of this year's version, but I think this, this year's is astonishing. And Nick Nickelbrook knows what they're doing when they make these barrel-aged beers. They've been doing it for a while, and they do it really well. Like This, this year's Kentucky Bastard is tens across the board in my opinion. Mel's opinion. I love this stuff. I love it. Love it. It's just like it's 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 exactly what you want from a bourbon bay bourbon barrel aged imperial stout. It's got that nice bourbon kind of barrel char flavor kind of going on. The chocolate, the roasted malts. It's just it's so the mouth feel. It's not too thin as some people might say. In my opinion, anyway, I just think it's it's glorious. And if you can get your hands on some. I recommend you try it if you've never tried it. There we go. Nice. I did enjoy this. Yeah, I always. Sorry, go ahead, Ash. I was gonna say I I did enjoy this year's uh, Kentucky Bastard. It's very nice. So good. Yeah, I always like. I was a really big fan of it the first time I had it. I'd love to try it again. But, uh, moving right along to Mr. Greg, who's got a beer I'd also like to try. Uh, what do you uh, oh, yeah, What do you I've think of Beard of, of Zeus? I got lots of things you'd like to try, Nick. Just, uh, just an aside to Redbeard. I, I suspect that the Kentucky Bastard is probably so widespread that I you probably have a completely different barrel than I do. So that's entirely beer, possible. Your beer may very well be better because I have had Kentucky Bastard before. That was like an eleven out of ten, and then I, to me it seems like every year or two they kind of swap. They have good a good batch, then a bad batch. But that could just be. Well, know, we did. We did this. We did discover the whole thing with uh, the Cafe del Bastardo and how that was like different and stuff. So maybe, yeah. I mean, I, I, I'm assuming they probably don't blend it. Like I'm assuming it's not like they take all the barrels, blend it in one giant vat, and then bottle that. I'm assuming they bottle it barrel to barrel. So yeah, I mean, not every barrel is created equal. So um, I mean, that could be that, or I don't know. Maybe one of us has a bad palate. We just have to find out who. No. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Anyway, so yes, I'm having this beer to Zeus, and it is tasty. You know what? I was having a little trouble trying to pin down the taste of it, what it reminded me of. And I kind of, I've picked it up. It tastes like either what it used to taste like or what in my mind it used to taste like was Innocent Gun. But not just the regular, the, the good specials they come out with, like the Candidate 2012, which I remember loving. I think that was so long ago. I don't know. Maybe it wasn't actually that good, and I was just making it up in my mind. But it's what it's kind of like my nostalgic memory of that beer. This is what it is. But of course, it's also cranked up. It's nice and full. It's like almost twelve percent. It's got just the right amount of sweetness, balanced just with the right amount of bitterness and a little bit of woodiness, and just fantastic. I, I really can't say much uh, bad about it. I even think I, I think uh, Redbeard's not the big barley wine fan here, or, or he doesn't like the barley wines, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I think this one's worth trying because I'm not the biggest fan of barley wines, and like I found Fuller's Vintage Ale, at least the one I had, to be awful. I found Thomas Hardy to be good, but overrated by a large margin. I, I did like the one that Redbeard blew up. What was that? Thor's Hammer? I didn't, yeah, quite, hammer. Yeah. I didn't quite like that one, so we differ on that. But I think this one is definitely worth trying if you get a chance, because I think it's it's different than like it's different than a regular barley wine is. Uh, it's for better or for worse. It's not not as not as dry, not as in my opinion flavorless as most of them are. Um, so highly recommend it. I mean, for style. 12 out of 10, because barley wines aren't that good of a style. Most of them, even the best ones, are not that good. So there you go, 12 out of 10 for style. Uh, or just 
rounded down to 10 if that screws up your system. And uh, personal enjoyment of 10. It's another it's wow. another fucking winner from GLB. Like, I just can't stop sucking these guys' dicks. They come out with so much good stuff. You need so much dick. <laughs> so eloquently put. I'll, ta- I'll, take my, I'll take my royalty uh, checks. Whatever, whoever the new dude's owner name, Peter something. Yeah, take my royalty checks. All right. Okay, Craig, what do you uh, have to say about your beer? Um, yeah, I mean, this beer is, uh, let's go for the aroma, I guess, and go for the whole thing, I guess. I mean, it's, it's boozy um, to a degree. Uh, it's got like a, uh, it's not got, got like a coffee, plum, um, maybe a, a touch of chocolate kind of notes to it, but it's kind of very perfumey kind of plum aroma, you know, alcohol, if you like. Um, it's slightly sweet, but yeah, I mean, you, you're getting the booze on this. Um, you're getting a bit of that kind of uh, barrel age kind of wine barrel from Madeira kind of thing, that red wine, almost like pork kind of um, quality to it. Yeah, I mean, it's it's one of them beers that it smells smooth, and then when you drink it, it is smooth. You, can, you kind of get an idea before you even taste it. It's, it's that kind of, you know, I find it with a few beers, you can always smell the smoothness. I've said it before on, on reviews and shit. So how can you tell it's smooth by the aromas? You can't, but you just, you get an idea over time where you think it, and then you try it, and then it kind of marries together. It's one of them beers. In terms of mouthfeel, yeah, I mean, you get that boot initial kind of thick, kind of ooze, kind of flavour. Um, I mean, it's leaving a bit of a lacing. You can yeah. see it. But yeah, it's, um, that kind of thing. Um, it's it, 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 it's it's sweet, but it's more it's more of a kind of bitter uh, coffee kind of bitterness on the back end. Um, but you're obviously getting. I mean, the four right the off the bat. Kind of first flavor you're getting is that kind of that barrel aged kind of red wine um esters from the barrel i don't know if it's oak or you're getting that with the plums it kind of works well like a red wine plum kind of thing right. it's very difficult to distinguish i think between the two um but yeah i mean it's just uh it's, it's a bit sticky on the mouth feel it's kind of a, like a, an upper end of a medium body uh else we got going on here. I mean, there is a little bit of booziness on, on the actual taste. But, um, it's a little bit warming going down. Um, you, I think you'd tell this is a big ABV beer, like plus 10% ABV beer, which is 12. So it's kind of what you kind of expect. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's a very tasty beer. Um, if you don't like plums, then as in the fruit variety, then you're not going to really like this. Um, it's one of them deals. Um, it's very complex. It's just, it's, it, it, I think it's all married work very well together. There's no kind of sharp edges or anything like that. Um, a good sharing beer, but I'm drinking an old bottle. So, yeah, cheers. Nice. Cheers, Craig. Cheers, Craig. Cheers! All right, let's uh, skip over to uh, moi. All right, so let's uh, give a talk about uh, the beer that I brought. So, first crush. Interesting. Um, after trying their IPA and the double IPA, it wasn't, they were good. It wasn't like anything to write home about. This is clearly the best beer that uh, that Lazy Bear makes, to be, if we're being totally honest. Um, the, uh, the, the smell I got off of it is just this, like, this kind of acidic uh, grape vinous like yeasty funk that comes off the top of like it smells more like a more like a lambic or a wine or something in the aroma uh taking a drink of it uh it's got this lovely tart drying woody tannicness that uh, that permeates the whole thing there's a lot of oak coming out of this this thing here it's just like a tremendous amount of drying oak i don't know how long they aged this thing for uh but I, my guess would be that uh, it was probably aged for a while, and it shows because it's actually very, very, very woody. Shut up, Greg. Um, 
Anyway, so the uh, the the taste I get out is it almost tastes like it's got you can almost taste the grapes they put in this because it's got <coughs> that. Like you ever like eating a mouthful of, like uh, like raw seedless grapes or something? You kind of get that that tannic skin kind of quality to it. Uh, I get a lot of that, like almost like a white grape kind of taste out of this out of this beer along with this drying. But it's not sweet. It's very drying in the finish, and it's very crisp, and it's it's it's, it's like it, uh, on the on the end as well. So it's yeah, it comes off almost drinking like a lambic, uh, or uh, or like a good white, like even a white wine. I'm not really a big wine drinker, but um, it kind of reminds me of some uh, like Chardonnay <coughs> that I've had in the past. It's maybe not quite that bright and acidic. It's got a uh, but the, it's very, very nice and drying and uh, got good flavors. And as far as saisons go, that is nice. Um, I give that a nine for the style and maybe an eight five for overall enjoyment. That is that is that is good. And I would wholeheartedly buy another bottle of this if I ever came across them and, and another farmer's market. <laughs> In a farmer's market. I love I that. Know. I know. A farmer's market. That's where I'm at. You're at a farmer's market. Totally illegal, but that's okay. Yeah. It's it's got to be it's probably as legal in Nova Scotia, but uh, mm, <laughs> it would be illegal here. You can buy cider and like wine at uh, farmers markets here, but not beer. Really? Jesus, mm. living in the wrong province, man. Yeah. All <coughs> right, let's go over to the shit ton of comments, and because there's so many comments, I mean, do you mind if I draft you? Uh, Ash? Sure. Read I'll away. I'll read away. Um. Uh, so, uh, what was? Hold I think, on. I think we left so off. Scott, yeah, Scott was saying uh, he's drinking wonderful complex individual stout from Trillium. Uh, nice. Lee is in the comments saying, "Quit the not drinking, Dan. Don't be a lame. <laughs> be a lame. Don't, don't be a lame." <laughs> um, so, uh, I agree. Dan's Dan like, give up. And then, uh, yeah, Dan's uh, seeing that uh, I was drinking that beer. Um, and uh, Scott was saying, uh, sounds very interesting. Oh, Lee, I quit the non-drinking March 1st. Um, then Lee says, this episode has been a solid 7 out of 10. But personal yeah. preference, 3 out of 10. <laughs> wah, 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 wah. <laughs> Lee's like, <laughs> was asking what next week's beer is because he's a scholar and a gentleman. Uh, Eric Gilbert got in the chat. Cheers, Eric. Cheers, Eric. Uh, cheers, fools. Cheers, Sexton. Cheers, everyone. And that is true. That. That's the end of the comments. All right, so yeah, we uh, we might as well uh, talk about what next week's beer is. We're going to, and, and we'll get on to the last part of this. Next week's beer, we are going to do oh, something geez. else that's barrel aged, and uh, it's one I've been waiting for for a long time. This is Amsterdam's Dumble Tempest, courtesy of Greg. We've all got bottles of the 2019 Yay. variant to this. <laughs> Except for Craig, and he doesn't have bubbles. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, so moving on along, let's go back to the, the last part of this whole uh, bring your own beer analysis shit. Let's go circle back with each other and ask of all of you, all the beers that you've heard it heard talked about tonight, which is the beer that you would like to try? Starting with Ashley, uh, I'd like to drink Craig's. That shit sounds tasty. <laughs> it, it, it sounds like it's right up my alley because he's talking about the plums. I love those types of flavors, like those, those rich, dark, sugary, sweet type of flavors. But they're not too like they're not like artificially sweet. They're like it's supposed to be sweet like that, but it's it's very much malt driven more often. I mean, it, everything about it, it, it just sounds like it's right up my alley. So uh, I, I like the sound of his beer. Nice. All right, Redbeard. Of all the beers you've heard tonight, which one would you like to try? Uh, probably the one Ashley had actually. To, uh, if, if it was maybe a bit even more fresh, because I like some spice and heat in my beer, so I think that would be really, really impressive. So, yeah, nice. This was just a tickle of the spice. Just a tickle, 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 tickle. tickle, tickle, tickle. tickle. All right. And speaking of tickle, Greg, what beer uh, that we've had, somebody else has? What one would you like to have tried? I haven't been paying attention to what anyone had, so I'm just going to say Craig because his beer is rare and I like rare whales because I'm just like you. Were. Way to go, Greg. Oof. So professional. Rail, rare whales, bro. Ugh. 
<laughs> all right, all right, all right. Uh, and of course, moving over to Mr. Craig, who uh, of all the beers that we've had tonight, which one would you have liked to try? Well, Greg beat me to it. I wasn't really paying attention. Probably Greg's actually, because um, <laughs> it, it, you know, because um, yeah, I mean, he said it's like an eleven out of ten or twelve out of ten, and he enjoyed it so. <laughs> He likes a barrel aged beer once in every kind of like six hours or so. So it's like, yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> I took it to my brain. wrong. <laughs> yeah. Well, so I, I, I'd probably go with that. Um, but I, I'm just curious about that sort of thing. I mean, he buys them regularly and they're, you know, they're not, they're not cheap. So yeah, he, he, he obviously knows his barrel aged shit. Well, I do, I do have curious. a stupid palate though, so keep that in mind. Kind of yeah, well, yeah, but uh, yeah, but again, I wasn't paying attention, so there you go. Well, fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> all right, all right, so let's move over to me. Which beer of everybody they had would I have liked to have tried? I'm torn between either Ashley's or Craig's. Uh, I've had Kentucky Bastard, I'd like to try, uh, um. Uh, beer to Zeus at some point. Imagine I'll probably wind up trying on at some point. I had one. I think uh, I think somebody brought one to the uh, the tenth bottle share. <clears throat> Ashley's got that rare one where it's like that. I only think the Collective Arts only ever made that once. And I like spicy beers. At the same time, the one that uh, the one that Craig had sounded really quite interesting too, with the, with the like that the dark plum. Anyway, um, yeah. So I'm I'm torn. I don't know which one to decide, and I think because Craig's already got the most votes, I'll probably go for him. Wait, wait <laughs> hey, Craig. Craig's won the beer tonight. <laughs> we're gonna, we're gonna barrel age things, man. All right, well, all right. So let's... <laughs> all right, so uh, let's uh, let's go back over. I don't like it. I don't like we're, it. Shit. We are all, only have one comment left, so I'm just gonna say that Eric Gilbert is probably correct. All these beers are out of coverage. Yep. So it's true. We should be drinking laggers. Yeah, totally. Laggers. Laggers. Laganitas right. or no, just laggers from Oshawa. Laggers. <laughs> just laggers. Yeah. Laggers okay. from Oshawa. <laughs> Osh Schwiggity Laggers. Schwiggity Schwiggity Schwa. Yep. All right. So I think it's uh, high time that we uh, we uh, we finished off here. So uh, and toweled off and, and then decided we would do an after chat after this. So I want to thank, uh, Craig. I want to thank Chris or I think Greg, Craig, Greg, Carrie, query, Ashley, Larry. Eric, Lee, Penis. Dan, Penis everybody Larry. in the, in the, in, around watching this crap. And, uh, we're going to sign off and come back on momentarily. See you. Cheers. Talk to you soon. Penis. <laughs>